We are ready for another evening here with Dr. Smith today, tomorrow, and beyond. beyond. This is our sixth night. Wow. It's amazing. It's crazy how fast time has been going, but it's lovely to see how blessed we've been every Amen. single uh, evening this, uh, this week. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here with us in person, and thank you for joining us online as well. That's right. It's a blessing to have you here with us, and we are so thankful for all of those joining us from so many locations to be a part of this incredible journey going through these amazing messages that Dr. Smith is sharing each evening. Yes. Last night was, again, beautiful, difficult, yes, people, difficult people, and I'm excited about tonight's meeting also. Yes, yes. And right now, I actually want to invite everyone to share. Yes. So I say it every night, and I'm going to continue saying it. That's right. Um, take out your phones. You know, before we used to be like, no, keep your phone in your pocket. But right now, I want you to take out your phone and go um, on Facebook, go on the live stream, and share tonight's message. So share yes. it with your family, share Everybody. with your friends, the WhatsApp groups. WhatsApp, just, that's right. Just go ahead and share. This is the time to share. That's right. Um, so before we get started, Pastor, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer. Very good. Um, I want to invite you to bow your heads as we seek the presence of the Lord as we begin tonight. Father, again, we're here this evening to spend time with you through the word that you have laid on the heart of Dr. Smith. Tonight, we ask that you will anoint him, bless all of us as we gather here, those online and in person. May we be drawn closer to you, we pray. Bless our live stream, bless those singing and those sharing, all of those participating tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So tonight's topic is going to be very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about attachment, attachment theory. Yes, this should be good. Yes. So pay a close attention right. because tomorrow we will be asking a question. question. Same mm -hmm. way I'm about to ask you guys a question about yesterday's uh, message. Very so good. So let's see who's ready. All right. We've got the book ready. Yes. The question's ready. Is the mic in the back ready? It yes, ready. all right. So let's see with the hands raised who goes first. All right. So the question is, so yesterday, Dr. Smith talk, talked about different kinds of difficult people. Right. Uh, including us. Right. When are we difficult people? Oh. There's something that we do, and when we do that, we are being difficult. Okay. When are we difficult people? Yes. Okay. So. All right. Tick. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Adi, share the mic with her. I'm going to back at it. When we harden our hearts, we're being difficult people. Very yes. good. Very yes, good. Yes. yes. And it is when we harden our hearts and when we don't listen. We to don't God. listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for tomorrow evening, Another we got to pl pay co close attention, because if not, I'm going to take these books home with me and give them to my family, and I know Mahendra's going to go ahead and, <laughs> and give them out also to her friends and family, too. That's right. So thank you so much. We'll be giving you the book in a few moments. Um, so tomorrow, come ready. Again, the giveaways are for people who come and join us That's in right person. Here. In person, have a book for you. Yes. yes. So we'll see you again tomorrow for another opportunity to get the book. Amen, amen. We are thankful and delighted that Dr. Mangela has been here with us throughout the meetings. She was at work today and came, got ready, and brought a message for us this evening. So we want to thank her and give her the time now to share with us a health thought from Dr. Mangela. Thank you so much. Let's see if we can finish this in three minutes today. I purposely made it shorter, so, uh, oh, I need the clicker, sorry. So this doesn't count. This minute is added on to me. <laughs> All right, so uh, John, third, third John, verse two says this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. With that in mind, um, okay. yesterday I talked to you guys about, um, why is it not moving? There we go. 
Um, we talked about the leading causes of death. We looked into cardiovascular disease. That's number one. Number two is cancer, as we mentioned, is the number two killer. And you can see the number of deaths that happened last year. So there are various cancers. What can we do to prevent cancer? Some of the in interesting things that we looked at is the same thing. Stop smoking, being physically active, maintaining a healthy weight, eating fruits, vegetables, and um, of course limit alcohol, but we are not going to do that. And protecting yourself against sexually transmitted diseases and avoiding sun exposure. So lung cancer is, again, a big thing. You have to stop smoking. And the people who are smokers, they, we recommend that they undergo um, low-dose CAT scans for screening purposes. Chest x-ray is not going to cut it. So it is recommended that people who are smokers get this low-dose uh, CAT scans for screening. Lung cancer, if you can see the picture, that thing uh, over there on the, to my left, that big white thing is the cancer. So goal of cancer uh, screening is to find it early. If you're 50 to 80 years old, you have smoked a pack a day for 20 years or two packs a day for 10 years, you still smoke and now or quit smoking in the past 15 years, you're eligible for screening. Mammogram, breast cancer starts at age 50. Uh, also, depending upon family history and other things, they can start earlier. And if you have dense breasts, you need like every year. If you are 50 years old, start, uh, start scre uh, screening with mammogram every uh, two years once. Some doctors recommend once a year, but it's advisable to do two years, uh, once in two years. And you see that mass that I pointed out, that white little thing is the um, cancer. Uh, of course, risk factors for cancer are uh, being a woman and, uh, you know, having genetic predisposition as well. So catch it early and uh, treat it. So the breast examination by the doctors and nurses are no longer recommended. You can do breast examination every month, but if you find a lump or anything, bring it to your doctor's attention. Screening test, mammogram and regular screening uh, through age 74. After you're 74, you don't need any screening. Cervical cancer, screening starts age 21, up to 65 years, screening test is pap smear, and if you're 65 and older, you don't need any screening. Colorectal cancer, the new thing is 45 years. Before it used to be 50 years, now if you're 45 years, you have to go for screening colonoscopy. And it's reasonable to stop screening when you're 75 or 85 years. So these are the pictures that I have put it out for you, the colon cancer pictures, those things that are looking at you, the red things, the circular ones, the polypoid lesion, that is cancer. Okay, prostate cancer, no longer recommended as a regular screening. But if you're African American, if you have family history of cancers, you should ask your doctor to screen for prostate cancer with a PSA level. Melanoma, it's a big thing. People who love sun expose themselves too much for sun's rays and it is harmful. You have to be watchful of your lesions. If you're developing a mole which is looking suspicious, um, I'll show you a picture of that so you'll know how a suspicious mole looks like and you can seek help. Avoid sun exposure, use sunscreen. And look at that picture, that's the melanoma. It is looking different color. You see that uh, different colors there. And this is very dangerous. Uh, of course, you have to look out for this and uh, ask your doctor to look at your skin once a year or so to look for these. And there's some things that we cannot screen. Some of the things are pancreatic cancer. There is no screening test for it. Kidney cancers, there's no screening test. Brain cancers, there is no screening test. But whatever we have knowledge, the scientific community has come up with, so go ahead and screen yourself for all of these. Detect it early, treat it early, and prolong your life. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mangela, for that health talk this evening. Uh, it's something very important that we should all be on the lookout and also um, encourage our family members and friends to also stay on top of so they can get um, you know, everything checked out ahead of time. Um, so tonight, 
uh, we will be going into the family prayer. But before I introduce them, I'm going to remind you, if you have any prayer requests, at the entrance there are some uh, prayer cards that you can get and write in your prayer request and put it in the box. And each night we go through them, we read them, and we do pray for them. So I'm also going to invite those who are watching at home. Uh, you can type your prayer request in the comments. Again, we do go through them, we read them, and we do pray for them. So this is the time for you to write in the chat those prayer requests. And now I'm going to introduce the family who will be having the family prayer this evening. And they are the Finley de Jesus family. So now the time is for them. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here with three of my precious grandchildren. They're students at the Whispering Pine Seventh-day Adventist School. My name is Priscilla de Jesus, and I'm in first, second grade. My name is Jonathan de Jesus, and I am in fourth grade. My name is Elizabeth de Jesus, and I'm in the seventh grade. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for life and health. Please help us to sustain our health. Please help us to learn more about you. Please help us to be blessed by past doctor's blessing. In your name we pray, amen. amen. O most and ever loving Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Asking you, dear Lord, to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I am so grateful for this evangelistic series that we are having here at Old Westbury Church. I ask you to bless everyone that are here tonight and those that are online. Father, the family is so important, and we know the devil is raging trying to divide family. So I ask you, dear Lord, to bless the family. Let love, joy, and peace abound in their home, Father. Let them find time to pray, and let them have that sweet fragrance in their home, dear Lord. Let them be able to have a song in their heart and have time for worship, so the devil will not be able to have control of their homes. Father, I present to you the children. Help them, dear Lord. Help them that they will be obedient to their parents. Help them that they will be good children at school, and they will listen to their teachers. I ask you, dear Lord, to build a hedge around them, Father. Help them and guide them. Help them to find more time to read their Bible and study their Sabbath school lessons, dear Lord. I ask you to bless Whispering Pine students, all the students, dear Lord, their, their parents and the teachers. We know they're in the last semester for the year, so give them wisdom, dear Lord, so that they will be able to get good grades and they will be able to move up to higher classes. Father, I present to you the sick and the shut-in. We have some prayer requests that some, is, some are asking for healing, some having marital problems, and there are others who are asking for family members that they would have more faith. We ask you, dear Lord, to grant it according to your wishes. Father, I ask you to bless the Greater New York Conference, dear Lord. Bless the leadership, bless our president. I ask you to give them wisdom, Father, and help them to be great leaders because we are living in trying times. Help them to be able to call sin by its name. Father, I ask you for all these blessings upon us and help us as we listen to Pastor Smith tonight, we will receive a blessing, I pray, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer, uh, Finley de Jesus family. So now it is time for special music. And I'm very excited because I actually got a little sneak peek earlier today. And I'm very excited for all of you to hear this beautiful um, special song who is going to be directed by the members of the Old Westbury Girls Choir, Nina, Juliana, and Elisa, and our sister Clementa playing the piano. Thank you. 
still the storm and calm the angry sea. With his hands he healed the leper. He made the lame to walk, the blind to see. Jesus bled and died to save me, a price that I could never pay alone. When he rose again, he gave me the greatest gift the world has ever Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful, special music. And yes, God is a God of miracles. So now it is time for the main part this evening. Um, I'm gonna invite Dr. Smith to get ready and join me here on stage. But before he makes his way up here, I'm just gonna invite everyone, again, if you haven't done so already, share the message. Go on Facebook, go on the live stream, and share tonight's message. And once you have done so, type in the chat, I am refocused because tonight we will be learning about the attachment theory. If you wanna know what that is, well, Dr. Smith will tell you in just a few moments. So now the time is yours, Dr. Smith.
Thank you so much, um, and he says, thank you. Good evening, love ones. Thank you so much for coming. And I appreciate the support you have given through the week. Again, I want to say a very special uh, recognition of the, the skills of these young, lovely young lady. And um, did such a great job in that special music. Thank you so, so much. It was awesome. Beautiful melody. Beautiful. Thank you for your, your great work. Um, uh, Doc, if you, if you would just indulge me for just a brief. First of all, I thank you for those two powerful presentation that you gave. But I was particularly more excited about this evening because of one little thing you say. Everything was good, but one part was more for me. Um, you said that um, they don't have to, uh, they don't have to go to the doctor to do the mammogram again. They can do it by themselves. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to use the word. But, we're on the same, we're on the same, same page, same page. And um, they can do it once per month. So um, I like that because um, I don't want to give honey the trouble of doing it. So I'm valent. <laughs> I really appreciate that. A bit of it for medical advice, you know. And he's not me, he's the doctor. When we come to worship him, we can enjoy his love and his presence. Amen? And as we enter into the relationship with him, each night we want to make sure that we are that vessel. Each night we want to make sure we open our hearts. We want to make sure that he, come, he comes in. Be that, be that sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you sing that beautiful song one more time for me are bowed, our eyes are closed, very softly, sing that song for me, oh God our Father, we come again another night, knowing that you are never ever tired of hearing us, so we open our hearts, and we pray and ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, we ask for the indwelling of your Spirit within us, we want to be that sanctuary that you can tabernacle in. So we ask, Lord, prepare us, prepare us, prepare us to be that sanctuary. Use your manservant today to deliver your message in a way that your people will understand and apply their hearts unto wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tried and true. why I use her as my singing evangelist. She speaks to the heart Amen. when she sings. Amen. First time I heard her, she didn't even know this. I was 
I was visiting her church and um, she was playing. Same thing that she was doing. And I sat there, I'm an evangelist. I, I, look, I know what I want in my meetings. And I watched her as she was playing as the pastor was making that little appeal. And it struck a chord in my heart. And even though it was a long time, the first opportunity I got to use her, I used it and am I, am I so happy. I just want to say thank you. May God continue to bless you because it's a ministry. Thank you. And um, you can tell your husband when you see him that I say that I appreciate him making the sacrifice to take you here on time. You can tell him for me. Attachment theory. The year was 2015. May 2015. I had my men's per convention in a place called Ellenville, New York. It was an inspiring weekend. We had almost 400 men that had come together for that weekend. And yes, we were blessed. We went through the week and I'll never the, the weekend and I'll never forget the Sabbath as the men gather together to sing. I'm going to ask you to uh, share with us that song that we all were singing in preparation for worship. Something that echoed the experience they were, they were having. Those are the men. And you will recognize some of them. Sweet Sunday morning we had our our per session and from that we went into our seminars and then our final meal our brunch and then the men would depart as the leader when you get to the brunch part you feel relieved no accident no incident nothing over the weekend and now the men are getting ready to go I remember sitting at my table with some of the guys eating and joking and having fun. It was now a light moment when two men walked up to me and said, are you the leader of the group? And I said, yes. And he said, come with me. I almost felt like I was arrested. I didn't know why. They were very serious. And as I stepped on the outside, uh, they took me into a room, they sat me down, and they said, there was an accident on the highway. And we believe uh, uh, those people were coming from this retreat. It was a van. They crashed into a truck semi and three of them died on the spot I literally collapse I said where did this happen he said just out the road where we had the hotel we have a road and then there's a highway. Just as they came off the premises and hit the highway, there was a truck coming and smashed into them. 
I cannot begin to tell you the pain and acne I felt when I walked out on that scene. And from there, I had to go back inside where the men were eating and to share with them the news. And I had gotten the names of two of the individuals who had died. And as I stood in the room, in, 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 in the dining room with the microphone and ask for their attention and explain that I have some sad news to bear. And when I shared the news and called the first name, you should hear the scream that echoed in that room. And the second name, the wailing that went down in that room. As the tears flowed down my cheek, and the men started crying. The, the entire room erupted in crying and screaming, Oh God, oh God, why, why, why? We, have been, we had been so attached over the weekend. We, we had come together as a body, as a group, as a family. This attachment was suddenly broken when three of us who were taken away like that. And I had to leave from that room after we prayed and visited three separate hospitals for the others who survived and were in the hospital. And on my way to the hospital, I was getting calls from the news media, calls, calls, calls. And we decided, the leaders that were with me, we decided we were going to go to the church. All three of them were from one church. And we decided, we send the news ahead that we will meet the members and family at the church. And when we got to the church, there was an entourage of news media. Can you play my next clip for me? And while that clip is coming up, we walked in that room. There was not a dry eye. Mothers, Fathers, children, because most of them did not know who, and they wanted to know, is it someone connected to, is it my son, is it my husband, is it my, and you're asking the question, here's the clip. Prayers tonight in this Brooklyn church. The folks in this room lost three fellow congregants this morning, including a teenage boy in a horrific crash up in Ellenville, New York. The group was leaving a church conference organized by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They were just about leaving less than four minutes drive from the convention, the accident occurred. Church leaders say the van was making a left onto Route 209 Police say a tractor trailer on that route slammed into the passenger side of their van. I don't know if you ever see a dead person alive. You're looking at one. I'm a dead person walking. Ariel Regis is one of four survivors. He was a passenger and suffered a few scratches. His eye is bloodshot, but he's otherwise okay. I can't really remember what happened, but all I can say is I was trying to um, put the address and the map so we can drive back. And then my head was down when I woke up, the car got hit. Two passengers were airlifted to Westchester County Medical Center, one in critical condition. The driver of the van has a broken ankle and another teenager, according to church leaders, was also injured, but how badly is not yet clear. Church leaders have been meeting with family members and trying to give some comfort during an incredibly difficult time. We have spent some time with them this evening and help them to process what's going on, but they are going through a very, very painful and terrible time. 
I attended all three funerals. I couldn't sleep at night. I was torn, shattered, broken. I never knew that something could have had such an, a painful feeling, emotional feeling. I couldn't sleep at night. I wake up early in the mornings. I get very little sleep. My poor wife was my wife and my therapist. It was hard. I went through the lowest point in my ministry in all these years that I have been pastoring. That was my lowest point. I'll never forget a friend of mine. His name is Benjamin Powell. He is the first elder of the North Bronx Church. He was there. This was, at the time, he was not the first elder. He is now. I'll never forget, almost a week into the situation, one day he just called me out of the blue on one of my low points. And he says, Doc, I just called to talk to you. He says, I know you're taking it personally. I know you're telling yourself it's your fault, but it is not your fault. I know what you're going through, Doc, and I'm telling you, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything to cause it to happen. And he prayed with me and gave me some more encouraging words. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. John Bulby, a British psychiatrist, says, before one can fully understand the impact of a loss and the human behavior associated with it, you must first understand the meaning of the attachment. Before you can understand the human pain, before you can understand the human agony, before you can understand what the individual is going through, you first have to understand the meaning of the attachment to that person. Because when that attachment is broken, only that person understands what they are going through. For you to understand their sadness or their anger, their guilt or self-reproach, their anxiety or loneliness, their fatigue or hopelessness, their shock or emancipation, their relief or numbness, for you to understand that, you must first understand the meaning of the attachment. So when some people carelessly say, oh, she got a divorce and she don't seem to be getting over it, I say, you don't understand the attachment that was broken. When someone say, oh, her husband passed away or uh, his wife passed away, but he, he's still grieving. He, he, it's time now for him to snap out of that. You know something? Leave that to the therapist to say to the client, but for you, don't stick your nose in their pain because you don't understand the meaning of the attachment. Before, before you can understand the impact of a loss, before you can understand the pain that is associated with that brokenness, the, the pain that is associated with that divorce, the pain that is associated with that death, the pain that is associated with that child being taken off to jail. Before you can understand that, you first need to understand the meaning of the attachment between those two individuals. I met her in London, England, 
I was doing a series like this. I'm a family therapist, so folks will come to talk to me. She came to the office that was given to me. She was distraught and distressed. For 40 years, she has been carrying this burden of guilt and bitterness. Guilt for losing her child and bitterness because she blames her mother. 40 years. When she was a teenager, she got pregnant, and in her community and her culture, her mom couldn't deal with it, so she left home. But after the baby was born and she started working, she left the baby with a friend each time, and mother came and took the baby one day when she was at work and took the baby back to her home without her consent and refused to give back the baby. One day she got the news, come quickly, your child is sick. And she dropped what she was doing and dash. And she got home. There was no house. House was flattened, burned to the ground. Then she was told that her baby was in that house and died in it. She learned later on that mother left the baby and five year old in the house while she was outside, wherever she was, and boy was playing with match and caught the place of fire, and he dashed out. But the baby perished in the fire. And she carried that anger and bitterness for 40 years. And she carried that guilt because she felt she had failed her daughter for 40 years. Until she sat with me for some hours for clinical sessions. And eventually, I got her to write a letter of forgiveness and relief. Confession to the daughter, it was not her fault. And a letter of forgiveness to her mother. I still have that letter, even though it's a long time. And when you read the letter, in it she said to her mother, I am now at peace because I found someone who helped me to get over. It is easy to criticize her and to say, 40 years, come on, snap out of it, get out of it. But you don't understand the magnitude of the pain uh, until you understand the attachment associated with it. When my father died, it was sudden. My wife was away at the college working on her master's and I was home and he just drove up to look for me. I didn't, didn't even know he was coming. Spent the evening chatting, eating, and normally the guest room is there for him to sleep but I said, Dad, stay with me. Sleep, sleep in my bed. And so I, my daddy and I slept in the same bed, the privilege I've never had since I, I grew up. I used to sleep on his back. I used to sleep. This was my childhood days, sleeping with my dad in the same bed. One week after that experience, it was a Friday. I'm at home cleaning up for honey. And uh, someone came and said, I got the news to give you. Your father is dead. I said, who? Which father? Your father. No, 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 no. it can't be my father because, because it was just last week we were together. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross caused that denial. 
not my father. And my wife and I, we packed up and we, we drove to my city. And I told myself, I only need to see my mother because all along I was in denial. I was hoping that the message came wrongly. He had an accident or whatever it is. I said, I only need to see my mother and I'll know if the message is true. And as I walked in that house and I saw that mother, I just burst out in tears because I knew it was true. You know, I'm the only boy from my dad. And... I've had this terrific relationship with him. But he died just about, not even two years after I got married. And I don't know, and I cannot explain it to you, but years after my dad's death, I started dreaming some horrible dreams with my dad. We are fighting. We have this ex heated exchange and these arguments back and forth. And I'm saying, I mean, first of all, in real life, that can't happen. You're not understanding me. When I was a boy growing up, in real life, that kind of argument that I'm dreaming can't happen if I want to stay alive. And I couldn't understand why I was having these angry dreams. And then, I, after I graduated from Andrews and started working here in New York, I, I decided I wanted to pursue my course in marriage and family. So I went to uh, Hofstra University. I um, registered in the graduate program and started my program on marriage and family therapy. And I had a class to do with one of the professors there. And um, in that class, she, she gave an assignment. It's called the goodbye theory, the goodbye. Saying goodbye to some painful event. Saying goodbye, for example, if you had a divorce and it was painful and you didn't heal from it, saying goodbye, whatever it is, saying goodbye. And she divided up into groups. And here I was, um, four of us. And we have a process, the goodbye has, um, it has a process. There are certain things that you do and you talk to each of us, take turn being the therapist and the others are listening on. And uh, we each of we are to come up with something you have not healed from. And you're to share that. You, you become the client and one of your classmates is a therapist. And so you're, as the client, you're sharing your problem and the therapist is going to help you to work through and then you have some steps to take and then you go through the door and you tell the person what you need to tell him. You say goodbye and you walk back through and that is supposed to take it away. Rituals, they call it in family therapy. So I'm sitting in the, my group and um, each of us, we must come up with something that you've been broken or, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying, but I'm not sad over anything. I'm not broken over anything. I don't have, I, don't, I can't think of anything and I'm being honest. There's nothing. I didn't have a bad life, a miserable life or anything, life, nothing. I can't think of one thing that I could bring to my classmate and I'm saying, no, maybe I have to go make up a story because honestly, I don't know of anything. And I'm sitting there, sitting there, and then it just hit me. What about those dreams that you have been having about your father? And so I used that as my story. And I shared with them how my dad died suddenly. And, and you never believe it. This was an advanced class. So all of us were advanced in the program. So they, we could do some clinical work. And as I sat there, the person who was the therapist for me, Work me back, work me through. And you know what came out? That I was angry with my dad because all these years he has supported me and has done everything for me. And now I went through college, I graduated, and one year after graduation I married this beautiful girl and we just started life together. So I've never had any money to give to my dad or to do anything for my dad, his only boy, to just say, Daddy, I, I made it. 
I made it and I can do this for you. And then just as things start picking up, you know, he just cut off. And they, as they worked me through that thing and took me to the door and I explained to my dad and I say goodbye to him and walk back into the room, from that time until this day, I've never had another bad dream of my dad. But if I were to explain to you that I was having these bad dreams, and you say, oh, your father died a long time ago. Get rid of it. Get out of it. But you don't understand my pain until you understand the meaning of my attachment with my dad. You don't understand someone's pain until you understand the meaning of their attachment to their spouse, to their children, to their friend, to whatever it is. Never criticize someone because you don't understand their pain. So let me share with you on how you must understand the grieving process. Number one, people's experience of grief, hurt, and loss are unique. Did you hear that? People's experience, they are unique. So when you see somebody react a certain way, when they have lost a loved one or whatever it is, don't expect the next person to react the same way because we are all different people. We don't all grieve alike. So you have to understand that and make room for differences of reaction and differences of behavior. And don't judge this one because of how that one behave or how that one react. We are all unique and we act differently. Number two, grieving is a normal response to hurt and loss. So when you see someone grieving, it's neither pathological nor dysfunctional. You have to understand it. Number three, one size does not fit all. So when you are helping people, you have to tailor help accordingly. So that if you go and look for this person and you take a bouquet and they appreciate it, it does not mean the next person a bouquet will do it. Maybe just to go there and sing some songs or maybe to bring a loaf of bread or something else. One size does not fit all. We don't grieve all together the same way. So you tailor help accordingly. So it is okay if you say, I'm coming over to visit with you. What maybe I could take with you, take for you? They may say nothing. I know it's nothing, but give me an idea. Give me something rather than you assume that the bouquet will do the trick. Jesus knows that we're living in a troubled world, a world of pain and grief, sorrow, hurt, and loss. So he gave us his assurance. He says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Why? The former things would have all passed away. My brothers and sisters, friends, loved ones, no matter how painful your situation might be, no matter what you think you're going through, God has a plan for your life. And ultimately, if you are faithful, he says, one day all of this will pass because I will make all things new. Thank you, Jesus. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And when you look at what's going on today, there is enough for our hearts to be troubled. When we look at our personal selves and what we're experiencing, there's enough for our hearts to be troubled. Yes, my friends, whether it's our financial situation, our job, our health, our family, whatever it is, there are things to cause our heart to be troubled. But the assurance that came from Jesus himself, he says, let not your heart be troubled.
as children of God, we have to hold on. I, I kind of don't listen to the news that often as it relates to Ukraine and what's going over there. I don't want to tune it out completely because if everyone does that, the, the, the horrific things will go on and no one will intervene. But I try my best because it's just too much. But Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Even that can't go on forever. Some of you may be hurting right now. Let not your heart be troubled. Some of you may be, you're just tired of what's happening, what's going on, the unknown of tomorrow. Today you're experiencing something and you don't know what tomorrow will bring and you don't know what will, be, what will happen beyond tomorrow. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus gives the assurance. He says, if I go, I will come again. And you know he's gone. Therefore, he will come again. It is not an empty promise, my friends. He will come again. It is not mere speculation. He will come again. It's not a make-believe story. He will come again. It's not a fairy tale. He will come again. It's not a fiction or a myth. He will come again. Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man a According as his work shall be. God, God has given us this promise. Let us get attached to this promise. Get attached to the coming of the Lord. Get attached to the love of Jesus Christ. Get attached to the God who created you. Let's get attached, my friends, to the one who is altogether lovely. You see, the apathy of modern man will not prevent his coming. They can ignore it. They can deny it. They can close their eyes. But it won't stop. For as the lightning uh, shineth even unto the east and, and, and go forth unto the west, even so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Whether we agree with it or we don't agree with it, whether we like it or we don't like it, whether we believe it or we don't believe it, hello, he is coming. The big question, my friends, how do I prepare for his coming? How do you prepare for his coming? How do we prepare for, for his coming? Do we allow ourselves to become so attached to the things of this world, to become so attached to the material things that we can't detach from them and attach to the Jehovah Jireh? The Apostle Peter provides the answer as to how we should prepare. Then Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Baptism is necessary for salvation. Did you hear what I say, folks? I say baptism is necessary for salvation. Oftentimes I hear people say, I don't have to get baptized. Yes, you have to if you want salvation. Yes, you have to. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized. It's not just to believe, my friends. The Bible says, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. I didn't want to get baptized. As a teenager, 13 years of age, going to church, I didn't want to get baptized. I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I just didn't want to get baptized. I was fearful that if I get baptized at 13, how will I make it? How will I hold out? You know, come on, that's a long time ahead of me. So I'm sitting in the baptismal class, or Bible class, in the Bible class. And the elder, when he was finished with the Bible class, there was a baptism coming up Sunday evening. This was the Sabbath, he says. All those who are going to get baptized tomorrow, hold your hand up. My mom was the only baptized one in the family. I have my father and my sister and myself living at that. I have another brother and another sister from my mother's side, but they are older and they were not living with us. 
And so when the, when the elder asked that question, some people held their hands up, and my dad held his hand up, and my sister held her hand up, but I just dropped my head because I didn't want to baptize. I don't want to baptize. I'm only 13. I, I, you know, I have a lot of time. And my daddy was sitting in the front. And he looked around and he saw his only boy with his head down. You know, that's not the right position that I'm to be in. So he got up from his seat and he came over and he says, why aren't you getting baptized? No, I don't know about you, but if you know my daddy, you put up your hand right away. <laughs> so I just put my hand up. And the elder wrote my name down and I was baptized the Sunday. That's my conversion. <laughs> you think I'm going get to get into a fight with my daddy? You're, you're going to be joking. And they put my... They wrote my name down, and I got baptized. 13 years of age. Today I'm 26, and I mean, <laughs> sometimes I get it mixed up, but whatever it is. <laughs> From that time, age 13, until today, by the grace of God, I have stayed in the church. I asked myself the question, what if my daddy did not show that interest in me? I did not have the interest, but he knew there was a better way for me. He knew he wanted his son to grow up after righteousness. He knew that I need to make a better decision than holding my head down. And that's what we parents have to do. Oh, sometimes, I'm a pastor, I've worked with so many parents, and I know these parents, they will say, well, well, you know, uh, he say he doesn't want to get baptized, or I'm not going to force him, or stop those foolishness. Stop those foolishness. When your child is of age to go to school, where's Marlanza? Marlanza, held your hand up. When Marlanza, Mrs. Thomas, when Marlanza was to go to school the first day, the mother, the father, the grandmother, the niece, everyone went with him to school, and everyone crying. Uh -huh. Malanza crying, mother crying, father crying, grandmother crying. I was the only one who didn't go, and I must have maintained my sanity. Cause I <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't hear one of them say, no, 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 we are forcing him to school. We are forcing him to go to school. Take him back. Take him back. He's not ready. The boy is crying. He spent all his life with his mama and baba, all his life with his mommy and daddy. And now they're putting him in this place with strangers and strange children and lady who's going to be his boss. He doesn't want to go. He's crying. And on top of that, he sees his daddy crying. He sees his mommy crying. He sees his grandma crying. Everybody crying. He doesn't want to go. But not one say, no, 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 don't send him back. The next day he was right back. Because they know it was the best thing for him. The same thing, parents. It's the best thing for you, and it's the best thing for your children. We're going to have, by the grace of God, we're going to have a baptism this Sabbath. Amen. And I want some parents listening to me today. You have your children. You need to rise up and take your boy, take your girl. And if you're grandparents and you're the one there with them, take them. And bring them to Jesus and say to pastor on Sabbath, well, you can call him and talk to him before pastor. I want my boy to be baptized. I want my son to be baptized. And here's, here's a myth that I need to get into the head of your parents. Stop saying your boy's not ready. Because if your boy's not ready, you're going to leave him with Satan? I would think if I have a boy that is not ready, I would prefer to leave him with Jesus. Hmm? I have a boy that is bad and I leave him with Satan? If the boy is bad, I leave him with Jesus. So no matter how you think he's not ready, he's still ten times better. Give him a chance with Jesus than leave him with the devil. So parents, I'm asking you. I am going to be here Sabbath and I want to see you come with your son, come with your daughter, come with your grandson, come with your granddaughter. Call pastor and tell, tell him, I want my child to be baptized. And then I want you. I want you friends who have not yet made that decision for baptism. Nothing is wrong in surrendering to your Lord. All I'm asking you is to detach from the world and attach to Jesus Christ. 
So tonight, I want you to understand the cleansing stream is here. The cleansing wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, with power to save, points to his wounded side. Cleansing the cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge it all, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord. Cleanseth me, he cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. I rise to walk in heaven's own light above the world unseen. With heart made pure and garments white, in Christ and through. stream I see I see I plunge it all it cleanseth me oh praise the Lord it cleanseth me it cleanseth me yes cleanseth me this coming Sabbath by the grace of God we're going to have that cleansing stream and when you go inside of it God is going to work a miracle for you you know my friends I want to tell you this I hear people say well I don't want to go because I did it once and I fell back. I, 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 I turned back. And I say to you, my, I say to you, when you were learning to walk as a child, how many times did you fall? Did you stay down on the ground and say, no, 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 this walking business is not working out. I'm going to stop and stay down on the ground and creep. No matter how many times you fall, you get back up. Because it's not in the falling, it's your willingness to rise up. It's the same thing with you and Jesus Christ, my friend. God is not counting how many times you fall. He's counting how many times you get up. Amen? Did you hear what I say? I say, God is not counting how many times you fall. He's counting how many times you get up. And that's what he wants to do, to get up. I've been preaching all week this week. I've been talking to you about the love of God. I want you to make a commitment, folks. I'm a man of God. It is my duty to tell you there's a better way. It is my duty to tell you that you have a choice and that you need to make that right choice. I'm speaking to those of you inside here. You either have drifted away from God or you have not yet accepted him. But tonight I want you to go to that cleansing stream. Amazing grace is heaven below to feel the blood of in Jesus only, Jesus know, my Jesus crucified. The cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge it all, he cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, he cleanseth me, he cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. I'm going to ask you to take a card. Young people are here, I'm going to ask you to take a card if you've not been baptized. If you're here, my friend, and you're drifted away from God, and I'm going to ask you to take a card. Don't say, I don't want to be baptized this week, so I'm not taking the card. I'm not asking you to take the card for that. I'm asking you to take the card because today, tonight you want to make a decision with Jesus. I'm coming back or I'm coming. I want you to take the card. Just raise your hand so I can give you a card. If you have not yet been baptized and you're here today, I want you to take a card today. Anyone here that is not yet baptized, or you were baptized and you have drifted, come on, I'm very serious. I want you to take a card tonight. Anyone else? Just raise your hand and let me give you a card. Young, our children, our young adults, and our older ones. I want you to take a card tonight. It's very important. Take this card. Take this card. It's very important. And while I'm talking to my folks that are here I'm going to speak to those of you who are online I want you to understand that Jesus needs you to get back into that cleansing stream if you have drifted away from him and if you have never done it before he wants you to do it tonight get onto your iPad your phone wherever it is you can get this card right now 
It's there. It's interactive. All week I've been telling you. And I'm going to ask you to go in and start. The first one says, I want to be a Christian and prepare for heaven. I'm going to ask you to do that for me. Those of you who have your cards. Go right online, my friends, and type that in. Thank you for those of you who have been responding. I want to be a Christian and prepare for heaven. The second one says, I desire to begin Bible study now. And I want you to put a check mark, a check mark. The third one says, I want to dedicate my life and be baptized or re-baptized if you have drifted away from God and you want to come back. I want to be baptized. I want to be re-baptized. And the final one says, I'm not a Christian, but need help to become one. Ladies and gentlemen, the world wants you to be detached from Jesus Christ. The world wants you to be attached to them. Jesus Christ wants you to be attached to him. And that's all he's asking you tonight. To attach your life, your heart, your soul. Won't you make that decision for him tonight? Won't you do that? Won't you do that? Bow your heads with me. Father God, there's somebody listening to me who needs to come back to you. There's somebody listening to me who needs to surrender their heart to you. There's somebody listening to me tonight, Lord, who needs to say, Lord, I want to be reattached or to be attached to you. We understand the pain, Lord, you feel when we detach from you. We understand, Heavenly Father, that the tremendous sacrifice you made on Calvary is because you want this bonding, you want this attachment with us. But sin has severed the attachment and that cause is pain for you. Tonight I pray that your children will come back. Tonight I pray that your loved ones will come back to you, will accept you. Father, on Sabbath we want to have a baptism. I want you to give folks the courage to make that decision. I want you to give them the courage to say yes, Lord, yes. I want you to give them the courage to put aside any fear, any trepidation. And just say, hear my Lord take me. Thank you for hearing and thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The cleansing stream I see, I see. I plunge it all, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me. It cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. And his precious wife, oh, the what a treasure. Lord I want to recognize you and thank you for coming, sister Javier. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Thank you. The cleansing stream I see, I see. I plant it all, it cleanses me. Your praise. Cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. beautiful uh, message this evening if we are going to be attached to anything or anyone we better be attached, be attached to, to god and to jesus amen very touching thank you dr smith i appreciate the thought when you don't understand their attachment boy you judge things differently yeah. when you don't understand mm -hmm. that that was so powerful that was so helpful because it's important to know what that individual how they're attached to the person, how they're attached to it, 
and that way you better understand their response. Yes. Wonderful, powerful message tonight. Yes. So good. Amen, amen. And also, I loved, you know, the fact that we don't understand their attachment, mm -hmm. but Jesus does. Jesus does. Amen. He understands your attachment, and he's there to pick you up no matter how many times right. you fall down. So giving your life to Jesus is the best decision you can ever make. Amen. Please remember as you're leaving tonight that the prayer cards are, uh, just, if you could put them in the prayer box in the back as well as the decision cards tonight. We have a lot of young people here tonight and we made sure all of them have a card. So please, moms, dads, those with them, make sure their cards are put in the back as you leave this evening to make sure that we can have those and do our part in praying and encouraging for those that need to be ready for baptism. We can make sure that can happen as well as anybody else that needs to make that recommitment or first time commitment. We wanna make sure that we're there to help and assist any way we can. Amen, yes, and tomorrow, We'll be back again yes. for our final night. Yes. Night, but then we'll be back Sabbath, Sabbath morning. morning right. But tomorrow's our last night, and tomorrow's topic is why people make mistakes. Yeah, that should be good. I need that one because I know my wife <laughs> has a lot of uh, uh, notes that she could share with <laughs> Dr. Smith. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward for that one. Why people make mistakes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's good. Wonderful. If it's okay, with you, Hennessy's. Before we close, I would like to invite the Greater New York Conference Treasurer, Elder Javier, to please come, and he's going to share a small greeting, and then close us out with another prayer. Too Amen. many prayers. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Love Amen. So, Elder Javier, please come and join us here this evening. Thank you so much for being here with uh, you and your wife, and we're glad that uh, you can have a few moments and just to share a greeting and close us with prayer. Good, uh, good evening, every, um, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. So I, I heard that powerful message. Amen. Yes. And not only tonight, but I, I'm enjoying that message every night. Yes. So I know the spouse and, uh, um, you know, wife and husband, they enjoy it also uh, all day uh, tonight. But let me tell you something. Um, when I was 11 years old, I got and I did my decision to get baptized. Amen. Amen. And that is 40, oh my Lord, I know you are good in math. Amen. 40 years, 40 years. So you know my, my age. But I have enjoyed Amen. all my life with Jesus Christ. Uh, that is enjoyed when we uh, place our, our, our life in, in, in the hands of Jesus. Amen. He has planned for you like he has a plan for me. Plans of, to prosper you. Amen. Plans to give you peace and a beautiful future. Put your life in the hands of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I want to pray if we, so can we stand? Yes, please. All right, please. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today, but we want to be with you not only today, but tomorrow and beyond. We want to place our life in your hands, Lord. Change what needs to be changed. Help us to understand that any attachment is in your hands, Lord. Amen. Do not judge anybody because you know the pain. You understand the pain, but you have the solution for us. Thank you for Jesus Christ that died on the cross for all of us. And soon, soon, very soon, will come to take us to live with us for all eternity. Help us and help those that they have no desire yet up to this moment to get baptized. But help them tonight to take the best decision of the life. And then the Sabbath, they can seal the life 
with Jesus forever. Thank you, Lord. Give a wonderful rest tonight and tomorrow new energy to continue doing your holy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a good night. And Take we care. Will, God we will bless. See you again tomorrow night, tomorrow 7.30. Evening. Share, share, share. YouTube if you need to see the message again and share it. Yes. Wonderful. God bless. <laughs> Have a good night. And desire for Jesus. Amen. 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 They'll give us the...